Hello again and welcome to the Halihewa podcast with your host Abigail Kima and this is day two at the Africa Climate Summit and uh, we've had quite a number of conversations with different people from across the globe and across Africa giving different perspectives of the Africa Climate Summit and again I have the pleasure of hosting Kaluki Paul who's a good friend of mine and I'd love you to introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Amazing, thanks Abby. Um, my name is Kaluki Paul, I'm a youth climate advocate and environmentalist from Kenya and um, I will run several restoration programs and youth engagement, uh, including Running Key, which is a national organization bringing together climate and environmental enthusiasts for action and for solidarity. Um, I also host the Africa Youth Caravan. Um, last year we did one to COP27, and this year we are hoping to run one to COP28. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just mention that KEEN means Kenya Environmental Action Network. network. Yes. And of course, it's a network of very young people in the space who are doing something in relation to environment and mm-hmm. conservation and climate change. Yeah. And when I see you, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is meaningful youth engagement because yes. you actually walk the talk. So yes. what does meaningful youth engagement actually mean for you? Thank you. I think meaningful youth engagement means several things. The main one is access enabling young people to access um, corridors of power, mm-hmm. such meetings like the After Climate Summit happening now, yeah. but also giving young people financing to enable them unlock their potential, scale up their on-the-ground works that they are doing, but also really intentionally planning for young people um, on on-the-ground programming, on policy matters, and really on capacity building that they need at times to be able to move to the next uh, phase of their development in their careers. Mm-hmm. Great. And uh, of course, you've mentioned that you hosted the African Caravan yeah. to COP27. What is a youth caravan? In? <laughs> and do you yeah. have plans for another one this year? Thanks, Abby. So the Africa Youth Caravan to COP27 uh, was hosted in the understanding that, um, number one, the conference was happening in Africa. And for it to be truly African, we had to remember that Africa is the world's youngest population. So we cannot allow young people to not meaningfully and actively participate in this key policy-making process. Mm -hmm. So we gathered youth from all across Africa, actually all the five regions, first into five sub-regional workshops, which brought them together to understand the key issues of negotiation that the African group of negotiators are planning Mm -hmm. towards COP27. Number two, we brought them together to also build their capacity and enhance enhance their existing capacity Mm -hmm. on what different interventions they were already implementing on the ground, of course, from nature-based solutions to energy access, food systems, and community development. And then number three, we brought them to sort of also prepare them into the process of going to COP27. And then in the long run, we brought about 20 or so youth to Sharm El Sheikh to actively participate in the Africa Youth, uh, I mean, uh, Caravan to COP27 delegation, which um, had an outcome of an, a declaration or an outcome material, which was an African statement on, um, um, you know, key issues around COP27 and why it was important for them to focus on youth action, food systems, just energy transition and resilience that we understand young Africans have been bringing to the table. So that is more or less how we program the caravan. And happy to know that we went, we conquered, and for three weeks we were busy interrogating with policymakers, civil society, and other youth leaders across the world who are doing amazing work to create the connections, but also empower these youth to know that we see them and we need meaningful engagement of them from the bottom level to the top uh, level. Mm-hmm. Great. And of course, um, you've talked about something called nature-based solution. Yes. And um, I have experienced some of the people you've even brought to the Africa Youth Climate Assembly and yes. the Africa Climate Summit. And there's been very interesting uh, projects that they're implementing with regards to nature-based solutions. Sure. So are there some that you'd like to spotlight maybe? Yes, indeed. So uh, basically, here at the Africa Climate Summit, we brought a total of 20 African youth drawn from five African countries, namely Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, Uganda, and Kenya. And ideally, we are working on a project called Duapa. Duapa is Ghanaian for the good tree. So we believe that young Africans are enablers of the good trees that you want to see in Africa and the good restoration efforts that we need to see in Africa. And so just from Kenya, we have big sheep. And nature and people are, is one who are actually being trained on active drone piloting 
and uh, G, uh, GIS uh, phone monitoring to enable them uh, engage in restoration activities on the ground, but also equip them with real data that will help them to monitor how much of impact they are having while engaging the communities in restoration. And at the same time, actually allowing them the opportunity to leverage on the capital and economies that they have locally. For instance, in Kenya, they are actually uh, through Big Ship, working with communities to then produce uh, natural honey from the mangrove ecosystems. And they're also planning serious ecotourism uh, and um, field guide uh, uh, expeditions that allow the locals and the communities to actually earn actively. In Ghana, we have the same project being done uh, by the Youth Big Foundation, and they're actually bringing youth across the country to engage in active uh, farm-based uh, restoration, which involves uh, farm-managed natural regeneration, but also protecting of their cocoa plants and other indigenous uh, trees that they have, uh, you know, within their communities. And this enables them to understand the landscape, understand the economies in the countries, and then actually get real data that they can use to engage with the government and therefore mobilize more funds, more resources to be able to do their works on the ground. So there is more in Liberia, more in Uganda, more in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but these are just some of the testimonials on what some of these youth are doing across yeah. the countries. And I think that's really brilliant. And as we wrap up, and as we wrap up, uh, looking at uh, the Africa Climate Summit and of course really being uh, vocal about climate financing and access for young people, yeah. what would you say are some of the expectations that you have coming out of this summit and going into COP28, especially being that you already have bankable solutions? What do you want this one leaders to do for your people and for yourself? Yeah, yeah. before I say that, allow me to just say that this year we are also implementing the Africa Youth Caravan to COP28, which you are welcome to be a part of. Anyone watching, Abby yourself. Is it a physical like, caravan? No. Well, it's very metaphorical, <laughs> but it's a caravan of action, a caravan of uh, impact, and a caravan of uh, solutions. And we are calling on our partners to come on board, supporters, and know that young people are not just a statistic. We are bringing real solutions, and we want you to see them, but not just see them. We want you to fund them. We want you to fund these young people to come to COP. We want you to fund them to go back to their communities and continue impacting their societies, because at the end of the day, the jobs of the 21st century will not be in the offices. They'll be out in the field, in nature, and in the communities who are actually the first to get the impact of the climate crisis. In terms of our expectations from this summit, first, I'm really glad that Kenya had this special moment to host it. I think it's an opportunity for Africa to actually deliberate on serious climate finance pathways. I think one of the things we expect is having a united front under the Africa Group of Negotiators especially on the loss and damage fund. We do hope that African heads of state can actually go with one voice. Our ministers can go and demand that actually this fund is brought and Africa, not just a few African countries, all of Africa and other developing countries will actually have equal access to the fund. Number two, we do hope that uh, through this, through President Ruto and the rest, they are able to actually give us unlocked potential, unlocked innovation uh, financing to support youth that are working on um, on the ground solutions. I do hope that also we can manage to support existing programs and projects as well, uh, podcasts, uh, the caravan itself, um, and having such you know investments into even the youth declaration that has happened, that has brought so many African youth. So I do hope that our heads of you know, countries can commit to further support it financially with technical assistance to enable us to actually propel our dreams further and really make this summit a success for if we don't do this. And I think we just have brought people here for talks, not work. So let's walk the talk and let's make Africa the great continent that we are. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. It was lovely having a chat with you. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Thank you for hosting me.